war to a finish this time. In 1932, the Australian military declared a war on emus, and the crazy part is they kind of lost. These are some of the unfortunate farmers whose sweet crops have been trampled down by hordes of emus. Following World War I, the Australian government clearly felt some kind of obligation to reintegrate their soldiers back into normality. They did this by giving large numbers of them farmland free of charge, and at first glance this seems pretty generous, however a lot of this land was considered to be agriculturally marginal and heavily affected by drought over the years. The Campion region where today's story takes place is no exception to this. Aussies being Aussies, they tried to make the most of what they had over the following years despite the tough conditions. But things were only made harder by the onset of the Great Depression in 1929. The government encouraged these farmers to increase their wheat crops and in return promised subsidies, but they never delivered on their promise. Already at their wits end, things were only made worse by the arrival of these guys. Twenty thousand emus had worked out that these new wheat crops were pretty tasty and not to mention that where there's wheat, there's water. The emus ravaged the farmers' crops, and they also did extensive damage to their fencing, which in turn allowed other pests to further add to the destruction. At this point, they said enough is enough, and a group of the farmers met with the Minister of Defence, Sir George Pearce. Having served in World War I, the farmers were well aware of the destructive power of machine guns, and they requested that they be put to use against the emus. Surprisingly, Pierce agreed. He stated a few minor terms and conditions in regards to who would bear the expenses, and he claimed that the emus would make great target practice. However, there are few mistakes in war as dire as underestimating your opponent. On November 2nd, 1932, Major GPW Lewis and a handful of soldiers from the Royal Australian Artillery were deployed to the Campion region armed with two Lewis guns and 10,000 rounds of ammunition. Upon arrival, they found it difficult to get within effective range of the emus. An initial attempt to herd the birds into an ambush was largely unsuccessful as they split into smaller groups and retreated, making them even harder to target. With this new knowledge and only a handful of kills to add to his report, Major Meredith knew he needed to fight smarter. So he set up an ambush and he instructed his men to stay concealed until the birds were within effective range before opening fire. Roughly 1,000 emus approached their position, but upon opening fire, the gun jammed and the birds employed their previous strategy. Run. Only 12 emus had been eliminated and there were no further sightings that day. By this point, the men were fed up and this is where it gets pretty Australian. They decided to mount a machine gun to the back of a ute or pickup truck, but this would prove ineffective as the ride was so rough that the gunner was unable to even open fire. The local media was now all over the failures like a rash, and upon scrutiny from the House of Representatives, Defence Minister Pearce made the call to withdraw Major Meredith and his men from the battlefield. There are various accounts of how many birds were killed, ranging from 50 to 500, but regardless, this was merely a dent in the 20,000 emus said to be affecting the area. Major Meredith would later comment on the emus' striking maneuverability and liken their invulnerability to machine gun fire to that of a tank. He did, however, mention in his report that his men suffered no casualties. Upon the military's withdrawal, the emus just continued on their warpath, and the farmers once again pleaded for the government's assistance to save what remained of the wheat crops. Major Meredith and his men were redeployed to the Campion region for a further four weeks, 
And although this attempt was far more successful than the first, with nearly a thousand confirmed kills and over 2,500 reported to be fatally wounded, requests from the farmers to redeploy the military in following years were denied, with the government opting for a bounty system instead, which proved to be very effective, with 57,000 bounties being claimed in just a six month period in 1934. Nowadays, exclusion fencing is a large part of the fight to stop these animals from destroying crops and it's proved to be both effective and economical. And that's pretty much it, that's the story of how Australia lost the war to emus. Obviously this is a bit different to my previous videos but I'm really enjoying this, this was a lot of fun to make so I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you soon.